this is a strange behavior. Hello, in this video I'll show you how the try catch block works and how you do exception handling. Now this is a part one from the part two and I'm gonna talk about the try catch block, the type of usages and what are the best practices to use that. So I'm gonna start with some definitions about what is an exception. An exception is a behavior which is undefined and that's why it's called exception because it's exceptionally. And when you catch an exception, actually you will transform that exception for undefined to a defined case. And as you already know, there's no limit of how many catch blocks you can have. You can have uh, an unlimited amount of catch. And let me give you some examples. Let's say you'd like to open a new file. You're gonna have an exception when the file is in used, so you cannot open, but you're gonna have a different exception if the file does not exist. And the reason there are different exceptions because uh, if the file is not used, maybe you would like to display to the user that it's open by a certain application. So it's somehow really depending on the use case. That's why there are different exceptions type and you can catch an exception specifically by using a specific catch. Now, how do you know this type of exception? Well, it's written in the documentation. And another exception, which is very familiar, is when you play a video on YouTube. Let's say you're gonna make a robot that it, it will play a video on YouTube. At the beginning, you're gonna have an ad, but not in 100% of the cases, there will be an ad. So if that ad, it will be appearing and you didn't define that, then it means that an exception, you cannot hit the play button. And if you have YouTube premium for another user, that will never happen, but for other users, uh, you first need to check if the ad is disappearing and then you're gonna click on that. Now, how do you fix exceptions? Well, there are multiple ways. There is the retry block, but the main point, and actually all of the activities, they're using the try catch block. And the try catch blocks works like this. What's inside the try, it's executed 100%. You can have multiple catches like I have here. Uh, let's say the first catch is 100% of the cases, the second catch and so on. And the finally, it really depends what you have in the try and the catch, but let's see that. And there's no best way to see how the catch block works rather than the UIPA documentation. So in the try, you're gonna put uh, all the activities that could potentially throw an exception. The catch, you're gonna specify uh, the exceptions type. And in the finally, holds an activity that should be executed if no error occurred or if the error was already caught. So it means that this finally it will be executed only if this try didn't throw any exception or if you have at least one catch. Now for some of the programmers, uh, this is a strange behavior because actually in the programming you can have try finally. Uh, you can have a try and without having any catch. And this is a difference for any programmers they have been using previously. For instance, vb.net, which is actually UiPad is using vb.net, it has the try finally. But in UiPad, you cannot have this. Well, however, you can do that, but I'm gonna show you just in a moment. So I want to make this clear how this try catch blocks works. So for that, I have just a simple example. Uh, I have a try catch. I'm just simulating some log messages. Uh, this is the before exception. That's the throw, I'm gonna throw a bad exception and then this log message should not be seen. Here there is an empty catch. Uh, actually, I don't have any catch and in the final block, there is this code. It says I am in the finally. So let's see how this one works. Actually, before to run, I want to make an, a parenthesis that usually this try catch block you're gonna put in every component and because I want to show you a real case, actually, I'm gonna give a rename. So let's rename this component, get temperature. Let's somehow uh, imagine that this will retrieve the temperature, maybe from a browser, maybe from a service, really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna give a run only to this component, which happens to be my main activity. So we do have this runtime error uh, with the bad exception. And if you're looking in the output, uh, it says before exception, bad exception has been thrown and we don't have this finally, okay? And the exception was thrown to the UiPad Studio uh, because we have seen that pop-up message. Now, how can you avoid? 
Well, if we add at least one try, and actually I'm gonna use the system.exception, this is the base class, the base object for all the exceptions type. And to make a comparison between objects and integers or strings, you can put a string and a number inside an object and all the exceptions they inherit, they will be this system exception. So that's the reason I'm using this system exception. So just delete. And if I'm just gonna give a run, because the exception is caught, I'm expecting to have this finally block here and the message is not displayed to the user. Great, so this is how the try catch block works. Another question is where I should put this try catch block? What's the best practice? How many try catch should I put? And the only advice which I give because there is no strict rule is to put it wherever it has a meaning. And let's take this temperature, uh, this get temperature. And because I want to make this as real as possible, let's say I would like to open a browser, retrieve the temperature from Google, and then maybe I should display or have it as an output parameter. So let's do that. So I'm gonna open a browser. Let's open a browser. Uh, and actually I'm gonna use the web recording. That's much simpler. I'm gonna use the web. And let's use Chrome. I'm gonna do google.com, open browser, tab the weather, and send the hotkey with an enter, and then copy the text from the temperature. Okay, and then save and exit. So if my component is opening a browser, it's typing to weather, it's sending a hotkey, then I expect to have a try catch block here. And actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna use control X, I'm gonna cut. And I'm gonna put this web on the top, this web here on the top. And I'll drag and drop my catch here. And I'm on my sequence and I'll use control V just to paste what I have um, cut from here. So in this try catch, I do have this sequence which says before exception is throwing exception. And actually let's move these components a bit down. I'm gonna use cut and I'm just clicking here at the bottom and it's using paste. Okay, and let's say the value of the get text should be a variable which I'm gonna create. Right click, create output argument and let's say the temperature. And then I'm gonna throw an exception. Great. So this is my component. If I'm gonna run, um, I'll have an exception handling. Now, one thing which I would like to have this try catch is by closing this open browser maybe. Uh, so I may choose to go here, actually in the catch block and I'll go from the activities and say close tab. And if there is one exception, let's say this exception, I'm gonna use another close tab. Okay, so the finally, I have this I am on the finally. So let's give a run here. I'm gonna close this new tab. Okay, it's opening a new tab, it's writing weather to and it's closing that tab. Uh, actually, I don't have any any browser open. Okay, now to make the thing a bit more interesting, I'm just gonna put this throw here on the, on the bottom, actually on the top of the get text. So my variable is not defined because I'm gonna, this get text, it will not be executed. So this close tab will not be rich, but uh, because I do have this catch block here with another close tab, this will be executed definitely. Now, if I let this program to run, I should not have any exception thrown here in the UiPath Studio. It will open the browser, it will get a temperature, uh, that value will not be valid, but this get temperature, it actually doesn't throw any error back. So as you can see in the UiPath Studio, I don't have any message blocks. Now. That's a problem first. 
And the first problem is that I have some duplicate code with this closed tab. So this is not the best way how we can apply exception handling and it's a bad practice. And I'm gonna show you how we can do this exception handling along with the reframework, but let's see that in the next video. A couple of takeaways. Use the catch block to define an operation. Uh, I mean, use the try part from the catch block to define an operation. Use only when you expect to solve an error. And if you don't know how to solve an error, let it throw. And I'm gonna emphasize again, if there is an exception which you didn't figure out or you didn't thought, let it throw. And try to don't use uh, to catch system exceptions because you're gonna throw all the exceptions that you're gonna have. Now, the reason I have made this in this video uh, is because I just want to catch all the exceptions just to make sure that I'm gonna close. For me, the operation was to get the temperature. And because I was creating a new browser every time, what was important for me was to that close the browser. If I would had other type of exception, I'm gonna let it throw. And always have a behavior in the catch block. Now what's recommended from the UiPath is to have uh, at least a log. Well, in reality, a defined behavior would be actually to throw that exception further. The way how I show you here, that's a defined behavior, okay? Because I don't know how to handle exception. So that's a defined behavior for my component for the get temperature. And the last one, be as specific with the catch exception as you can. For instance, when you cannot open the file because you don't have access rights, or you cannot write the file because the disk is full. So um, you may consider to have a different behavior. Now, how do you know about all of these exceptions type? They are written in the documentation. This is the part one. In the part two, I'm gonna show you how you can implement exception handling even when you're dealing with the reframework. So I catch you in the next video.